Hear those birds chirping? I would have never noticed that. When I went through like my, my huge, I guess, realization, like my eye opening a year ago, I started to notice things that were so beautiful that I never used to notice before. When you're walking, sometimes it's not just take off the headphones and just listen to the music around you because there's something beautiful in everything every single day. I just wanted to point that out. Those little things that beautiful that can just make you happy and realize that nothing is really as bad as it seems and there is something to be happy about every single day so on that note another thing to be happy about is anatomy just kidding all right i'm gonna go to class now good morning everyone today is wednesday and it is february 22nd i pre-made my meals uh i'm always on wednesdays uh I, that's my busiest day of the week, so I just bring my lunch with me and it's always the same thing. I have a Tupperware with four ounces of chicken, four ounces of sweet potato, I always bring that with me. So I'm taking that with me for now and then I'm not going to be home again till around 3 o'clock and then I'll go to the gym tonight. But um, that's about it guys, let's go through this day. Let's do this. <laughs> Hi guys, so today I want to talk about something a little bit different. So I don't know how many people are familiar with what is called the DASH diet. If you are, then you are aware that it is something that is mainly used for people with hypertension, hypertension being high blood pressure. So I wanted to talk about this because I think that the DASH diet is something that actually could be implemented just in general, not just for people with hypertension. And it's actually in interesting because over 50 million Americans have high blood pressure and over 46,000 of those Americans have actually died from high blood pressure in 2001. So that is a big deal with the way that Americans eat and just how our diet is. It makes sense to me why there's all these issues, specifically high blood pressure. But the DASH diet is something uh, dietitians implement this all the time for people that have this uh, issue or people that are at risk for high blood pressure already have it. So when people think of high blood pressure, we always hear the typical sodium, okay? So that is true. So basically, uh, high sodium diets are going to cause you to have high blood pressure so one of the main components of a dash diet is to lower your sodium but it's not just about lowering sodium it's also about it is also about increasing your calcium increasing your potassium and increasing your magnesium so in a dash diet we really want to emphasize upping your potassium intake upping your magnesium intake and up and upping your calcium intake. We also want to talk about your polyunsaturated fatty acids. Yes guys, fats are important. I don't care what anyone else says or thinks. Fats are important, but the right fats. So that's also like very important in this diet. Um, my two, I, I like to generally myself follow a Mediterranean diet. So I'm always going between the Mediterranean diet and I've also been implementing kind of the style of the DASH diet lately myself, just from as I've learned more about it. Also guys, exercise. Exercise is going to also tremendously lower your blood pressure. So let's think about this for a second. So I just have this written down as an example. Your normal blood pressure is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Okay. so. An athlete now, so say we have an athlete that does a lot of cardio, like just say we take like a mountain biker, even a lifter, anyone that's really just, you know, active exercising like every single day and not just resistance training, but also they have good cardiovascular endurance. So we do their calculations. Okay, so they have a heart rate of 44 beats per minute. So at first it's like, okay, if normal blood pressure is 60 to 100, 
um, does that mean that this athlete has bradycardia? Like they have a really slow heartbeat, like they're gonna die? What? No, it does not mean that. Okay, I answered for you. So really what it's saying though is the your heart becomes more efficient. So your body is so used to this cardiovascular training, you know, that why do you think things are so hard at first? Your body has to get used to any type of training you do, but once it does, your heart gets stronger. When you exercise, you literally are not just making your muscles stronger, your heart is physically getting stronger. It is able to push up more blood in one beat. So it takes less beats for it to be efficient. It just It's like a machine, guys. So in 44 beats per minute, it can get all that blood out faster, more efficiently. It doesn't have to work as hard versus, you know, uh, the average sed sedentary person. So exercise is going to help your blood pressure because it's going to lower the beats per minute and just... It's just the whole thing. It's a diet and exercise, guys. It It's proven, guys. There's statistics. We know this for facts. There you go. So according to AHA guidelines, there is what we call the salty six. Soup, sandwich, poultry. Uh, we got pizza. We got cold cuts. We got bread, rolls. Those are like some of the main things that you're going to want to technically stay away from. Poultry is an issue for me. I ate a lot of chicken and turkey and all that stuff. Um, obviously, this isn't too much of an issue for me, but if this is something that you potentially see yourself struggling with or if you're just on a journey to really just get your health together, get weight loss, uh, work on if you have people in your family that have had blood pressure, hypertension, or CVD or something, this would be a great thing for you to try and work on. So what I think is really cool is um, I'm going to just read off this now and show you it. If you go on Pinterest or even just on Google Images, you can type in dash diet grocery list. So, you know, like this is one right here. I'm going to read some of the stuff off here. And you can just take it with you. This is the same thing if you're doing the Mediterranean diet. All you've got to do is literally go online and look up a grocery list and just take it with you. And then there's always, there's so many sources online for things. And as I do this more, I'm going to try to post more uh, different recipes I try out and stuff. Now, for instance, like under fresh, they have a, this one has something for fresh vegetables, for cereal, uh, grains, blah, blah, blah. Like under fresh vegetables, it has artichokes, asparagus, beets, bell peppers, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, carrots, celery, corn, eggplant, green beans, etc. Then you go under cereal, you have your oats, you have low-fat granola, whole grain cereal. Under breads, it has just uh, different bagels and stuff like that. Under breads, it has... Just, uh, different bagels and stuff like that. Under fresh fruits, apples, apricots, bananas, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries. Under your grains, brown rice, couscous, kasha, quinoa. Like, it, it has all the different stuff laid out. So you can find things that you personally like and go from there. An amazing source is always going to be eatright.org. I highly recommend that. Eatright.org, myplate.org, um... They have a lot of good uh, information on there. So you're buying not just what the, the grocery list says, but the nutrient-dense sources of it. Now, I also talked about polyunsaturated fatty acids. What are some good sources of that? You know, we have soybean oil, we have corn oil, uh, we have avocados, we have like the fatty fish such as salmon. There's Most fish are going to be good for you, but the best one... Uh, we even talked about this in class. I remember I asked, I'm like, so what fish do you go for? Generally, most fatty fishes, or just in general, but salmon is always going to be your best bet. But always, always aim for monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Now, the reason that we say polyunsaturated fatty acids is because they, co they contain arachidonic acid, which is a precursor for prostaglandin. Now, prostaglandin does a lot of things. Like, one of the first things it does is the contraction of smooth muscle as well as the relaxation of it. It also is for the dilation and constriction of blood vessels, and with that, the control of blood pressure and modulation of inflammation. The more polyunsaturated fatty acids we have in our diet, the more that's also going to help to lower our blood pressure because of the prostaglandins. Dilation, constriction of blood vessels, lowering your blood pressure, like the DASH diet, exercise, 
it is so important. So really work hard on lowering your sodium. We want to go somewhere between 1500 to 2300 milligrams a day of sodium. And then generally, like for instance, for calcium, the general recommendation is 1200 milligrams for ages, I believe 19 to 50. And then we want to take it up to for calcium the general recommendation is 1000 milligrams okay so we want to bump it up to about 1200 milligrams on this dash diet so my point with that saying is for magnesium and potassium and calcium we want to be above the general recommendation sodium we really want to take down and we want to up those polyunsaturated fatty acids so do some research look it up see if there's something that could fit you and really understand see your body as this vessel taking you through life like you really need to take care of it guys try to find a diet that sticks to you don't go for the fad diets okay stop going for the fad diets go for something that actually is a lifestyle change like that's why i always preach the mediterranean diet like crazy because i mean growing up greek i mean i've kind of been around it my whole life but that's something i've always followed because it's it's proven like the foods on it are proven like look at people in other countries like how healthy they are how their longevity of life is so the dash diet is something else i wanted to introduce just because it is for people with high blood pressure doesn't mean it's something you can't try yourself even if that's not something you struggle with why not try preventing it from now and having a healthy heart so i hope you guys found this health helpful let me know if you want more information on stuff like this but between the mediterranean diet and the dash diet i'm going to like implement those two styles into my daily living as i do already but i'm going to work on it harder because you know i trip up too and i'm eliminating certain things but again, guys, stay away from the fad diet. Stay away from these stupid little things online you can buy. And just try to find something that works for you that you can stick to on the daily and find new recipes for and something that really just gets you excited. So with that being said, um, if you guys do try out the Dash Diet, let me know. If you guys want me to see doing more recipes of the Dash Diet or different like alternatives to other meals or snacks you do, how can you replace it, replace it in the style of a Dash Diet? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. But I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm off to go train legs now, even though I'm really sore and my hips are... I went for, uh, I don't like do powerlifting, but I did attempt my max out on deadlift last week where I hit 295, which still like, i still trying to process that, which was amazing. But the issue is my hips are killing me now. So please stretch guys. If there's anything I could tell myself in the past, it'd be to stretch more, do yoga, roll out. So I'm trying to do that now. You should too, because if not, you're going to pay for it later like I am. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. I will catch you later. Like a machine, we all need repairs. I used to think that as all these repairs added up, I was really just falling apart more. That each time I thought I was fixed, another piece of me fell off and needed more work done. I used to think that by going to different mechanics that maybe one could fix me. Maybe even replace some of these broken parts in exchange for new ones. I grew tired, and I grew weak. I got sick of always looking for ways to mend the mess I became. It wasn't until I realized that these broken pieces are what made me who I am that I was able to find the beauty in them. I changed my perspective that repairing myself was actually working on myself and creating the beautiful masterpiece that is unapologetically me. We become more beautiful after being broken. Now, looking back, I would never trade the pain and experience I've gained over the years because they have made me become who I am today. That realization is how even with my broken pieces, I became unbroken. Realize the best mechanic you can go to is free. It's God. God knows we are all broken people and through Him, we will be made unbroken and find a love we never knew existed. I promise. Love every ounce of your being because like a machine, we were created for a purpose. I am unbroken.